Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm just doing some general maintenance in my spider room and I come across a, a comment on one of my previous last videos from Kieran. So thank you very much Kieran for that comment um, for the P. metallicus from slings, juveniles to subadults. So it's a very interesting one with this species because if you look at the habitat where they're from, the uh, Guti Sapphire from India, they actually get over a few locations in um, that area and the temperature can fluctuate quite a lot from up to 30 degrees, um, slightly over 30 degrees, and also can go right down as low as eight degrees through the winter times. And the moisture with this species as well is another big one. So. Um, I'll tell you what I found with keeping them in my collection because I've had uh, P. metallicus from slings right up to adults and I've managed to rear one to an adult and uh, it's quite an interesting one for me because my very first tarantula was a P. metallica and uh, I put a few questions out there on Facebook uh, hobby groups when I first started and I didn't know anybody in the hobby and people told me not to get that as a beginner tarantula and I sort of agree, but if you do your research, you can pretty much get whatever you like. Uh, just make sure you do your research, you set it up well, and then you just evolve from there. So I managed to keep that one, and it was a female, and it grew straight to um, an adult. <coughs> the only mistake I did was I didn't know the size of the enclosure, so I put it in too much of a greater size enclosure to start with. Um, but I learned straight away that it wasn't feeding, and I downsized it into a smaller enclosure and went from there. But I quickly learned to adapt and get... Uh, used to the P. metallica. Now I'll show you um, a sling and then I've got no adult at the minute but I've got a sub-adult up there. I did have two but one just perished while I was away on my honey room for no reason whatsoever just in the mold and it just got stuck and unfortunately it wasn't here and I couldn't peel it off and save it but I've got one left which I'll show you up there. But I see sling pots like this that they come in if you can get a small one uh, one centimetre to a centimetre you can put it in here I never do never ever ever um, I would normally go for stuff like this um, and the reason is for ventilation and with these sometimes it says like 70% to 75% humidity for the P. metallica so what I try and do is keep a little bit more humidity for a sling but put it in somewhere where it's got a bit more room it gets used to it smaller and when you traverse it up it gets a bit more calmer because I find they are quite skittish but I'll show you the enclosure I keep my slings in in a second I find instead of using these when you go to give crickets or prey items it doesn't give the tarantula much room to move around in so with P. metallicas they're actually medium to fast growing um, I've not had any take an exponential amount of time they're very very quick especially the, the males but I find the males and females together they both grow at the same rate and then the female will get to a certain size that starts slowing down where the male then mature out quite quicker but I like to give a bit more room I like to give a tiny bit more humidity in an enclosure for a sling something with air holes at the top and bottom so you get the transfer and then as they traverse to older ones I would like to give them uh, less humidity and I'll explain that in a second but first I'll show you the sling setup I use for the slings. Okay so this is the first sling that I'll show you in my collection. Uh, this one stays inside the cork buck tube that I've used there and I just try and entice the cricket at the top and just see if it'll come and take but you can see I use the little ink pots on the side full of water and I use the moss just to raise the humidity in there but one of the main things I like to do is make sure that there is uh, springtails you can see on the side of enclosure and in there running around these help maintain a clean enclosure and I think this is one of the main things I like to do with most of my tarantulas but especially with my P. metallicas especially when you've got something where you raise the humidity slightly but you can see it's not overly wet there I will miss this slightly after feeding as well but I'm just trying to encourage the little sling to try and eat and it will stay in the cork bark so let's have a look at the second sling and this one stays out. It does go into the centre, but it stays out majority of the time. And this one, if you notice, I've got more uh, springtails in there. What I do then is I just dry that out or I put a paintbrush in and just quickly brush them out. They stick to it and I just knock them back into a temporary enclosure that I've got just to keep them OK. So obviously when you use a bit more moisture, they then start to boom quite quickly. But you can see this one's not very skittish. It's not very... 
um, alarmed. I'm just trying to do it nice and gently without breathing on it, but I'll get this one to take. But same again, same bit of cork bark with the moss on for humidity. You can see it takes, and I've got the ink pots there for moisture as well. Okay, so you can see how I kept my slings there and it works brilliantly for me. And I find that putting a bit of moss in there at the bottom, uh, sometimes I do gravel at the bottom as well so the excess moisture goes down, but it's enough to give constant humidity up and through the growing slings. And then obviously a nice hide, they got out of somewhere where they feel secure and to hide. Uh, maybe a couple of water dishes, um, but then you'll find that uh, P. metallicas may not web or they can do, but I've had most of mine now, I know how to set them up and they web. And then I go through smaller pots like you just saw there to maybe bigger ones like this for sling to juvie size. And this again, just replicates what you just saw and um, they can web up, but it's just for more for the visual um, aspect of it. So I could see them, keep an eye on them. And then I could see if there's any moisture build up on the actual side of the enclosure. I could see if there's anything at the bottom, any mold or anything like that. But with my P Metallicas, um, as they get to small GV size, I tend to start pushing back off the moisture and not giving them too much. And I'll show you what I go into next. Okay, so we've come up onto my shelf and this is where I had my two um, P Metallicas. That one was the confirmed female in the left, which perished. And this one was um, I was thinking a male, but I'm not too sure at the minute, so I'll definitely sex on the next malt. But every time I've gone to sex this one, it destroys the malt. I never come in and catch it at the right time. But what I want you to notice is I'm here. I've got a torch on it now. I've got the red lights above because the tranches can't see the red lights, but I've got the torch shining on it so you can see it. And P Metallica's out. P Metallica's, both of them I had here. Once I do the closures, the way I step them up and then put them in here from juvenile to sub-adults, and then I move them again to adults. Um, but they're out all the time, all day, every single day. And the amount I've seen before where people have them hiding and they never come out and stuff like that, mine are out permanently. And to the point I could pick this up and this one may run because this one's more skittish. The other one was a lot more calmer. But as you can see, I'm on the enclosure there and it's just scrunched up in the top, which is a normal defensive posture for the P Metallica when it feels a bit of movement or it's startled. But it's still out in the open and it stays there and it will feed anywhere in the enclosure really i could just drop something in normally this one never takes on camera never takes with the lights on always takes when it's in the dark after so it'll leave something in there but the thing you want is a p metallica is you want the p metallica out every day you want to see it it's so beautiful and stunning and the way i've done my cork buck is i slightly angle it because they like to when they're really hungry they will sit on it and they will point down at the bottom ready to catch, uh, catch anything so at the minute they go around the glass and they hide behind when they want to. But I know at the minute when they're going into a malt, it will go behind the cork bark and it just stays there. And I know it's then going into a malt, but I keep it this way so that I can see them all day, every day. And what I've done is gravel at the bottom and I've done a mesh layer and I've done a substrate. And this side is dry. This side is slightly moist where I've got the water dish. And I top the water dish up once a week, sometimes I will flood a part of this uh, substrate only once a month. That is it. I will never do any more. Sometimes if it's too hot, I will then mist a little bit more. But you don't want to overwater because if you've got 30 degrees or somewhere around back there or a bit more, you get that steaming effect, which is quite bad for them. So here in this corner, it's 24 degrees at the minute and it is currently one o'clock. So it's going to get hotter now in my spider room to about 26, 27 degrees. And then it will start cooling off again for the evening. But the way I keep them here at this position, they are always out all the time. So let, I'll just take this one down and we'll see if we can feed this one. Probably not, but we'll see if we'll just give you a good look. And it's not ran off, look, it's still there. And it's still, sits out in the open. There we go. So you can see the coloration. This is a sub adult. I just startled it there. I've got the camera quite close with the light, so it's feeling a bit threatened. So I know this one isn't going to eat at all. And you can see there's a bit of water in the water dish. Um, it's not too moist in the enclosure. I'd actually say it's quite dry. Yeah, I'll probably say it's quite dry. And as you can see with the glass on this enclosure, it um, is a messy tarantula. It defecates all over the place and I've constantly got to clean the glass with a little sponge sort of stick. 
and get in there with a bit of warm water just so I can clean that off because they leave a lot of mess. But let's just see if it will take a prey out of him. I'll be amazed if it does. See if I can give it this. I've got a male dubia, which is quite large. It probably won't take it. The spider is well aware that the prey items there, they've got very good eyesight. that ran in and out and all over the place there it is i just let it run around and uh, it will settle down and it will eat that uh, dubia roach later on So there we have my sub-adult going into an adult tarantula and it will get that dubia roach, it will get that later on. Um, this one's always been slightly skittish. Um, the other one that was confirmed female was so much more calmer and my adult female that I had before from my very first one, she got to 20 centimetres, she was absolutely huge. I'll put uh, a quick bit of footage there on the screen so you can see. So I don't have a lot more other footage of her, but she was absolutely amazing. Um, I moved from city to city when I met my wife, so I had to get rid of all my collections. So fortunately, she went on to someone else. But you can see I kept that enclosure very, very uh, basic. Cork bark, cocoa fibre, water dish, and a lot of air ventilation at the top and along the side, which you can't see on that one at the minute. But they can get really, really big and really, really chilled if you keep them this way. But in this enclosure here, um, I can get a look at the size. This is 16 centimeters across by 22. And my female, the one that you just saw in that larger enclosure, did not like the larger enclosure when you put food items in. She just freaked out and preferred being in something like this. I had another tarantula, in fact, another two P. metallicas that turned out to be males, and they preferred the smaller enclosure. They didn't like the bigger enclosure because I've got bigger 30 centimeter arboreal enclosures at the back there, which I'm going to use for some other species. But uh, all the P. metallicas I've had, if you give them a bigger enclosure, you tend to not see them out as often as you like. If you give them a smaller enclosure, uh, I find that they're always out. So I'll probably keep this one in here until it gets a lot bigger and then I may see about moving it to a bigger enclosure. If it doesn't like it, I'll put it back in this when I do one of my cleans and go through and just revamp the enclosure. But um, that's how I keep them. That I guarantee will eat later. It will eat that roach later once I've gone out of the room, the lights are off and it's nice and dark. Um, hopefully I can get the malt um, when it malts next time and see if this one is a male or female. So uh, fingers crossed I've got female, but I'll definitely get a few more of these. Um, I love P. metallicas and they're so good to keep our slings. They're very active and I like the way they do their front legs when they run around. And when you get them used to taking live prey, it's absolutely brilliant just watching them grow because they grow so, so quick. But I think whatever enclosure you've got, if you've got smaller tubs, um, big glass ones, it doesn't matter, it's whatever you prefer, but just make sure it's got cross ventilation and uh, low and high ventilation, what I've put on mine as slings. When they start getting to big juvies, to sub-adults, as you can see, there's no ventilation around the whole of this enclosure, it's just the top. And I did the same with my adult femur and it works better. And they stay calm and no threat posing, nothing at all. And all I do is just soak a little bit of uh, the substrate once a month, Put it in the water dish sometimes i spray on the moss on the side of the cork bark and i've seen the tarantula get some moisture from it but if you're regularly feeding um you'll hardly ever see your p metallica go to the um water dish and i've done the bit where i've put water dishes high and low and i've only ever seen them go low i've never seen them drink from high doesn't mean they can't somebody probably has seen that but um if you want to get that as a beginner you have to be aware that this has probably got um 
potent venom. It's probably got strong venom uh, just due to the nature with um, the colours, the markings, simulating, stay away from me, I'm dangerous. And um, there's not a lot of information out there on these, but I don't find them defensive. I don't find them aggressive. I actually find them skittish. And because of their movements, they can be extremely fast. You saw there that that was probably a three out of 10 of speed. I have seen them just go very fast and they've got a good jumping range as well. So they can jump quickly and quite far, which I have noticed. I've had uh, my adult female jump out of an enclosure and onto my front. And then I was next to a table and she just ran down on the table and I just got her in. So it wasn't too uh, bad, but I wouldn't say these are prone to going to bite. So it's definitely a good one. And if you do it like this, it just stays out. Like I've startled it, it should run off, but it doesn't. It just stays out and it will stay here. And what I love about this now is it will get that dubia, not hide behind, it will sit out on the glass and it will eat the roach on the glass so I can see everything. And I can see with the P metallicus as it rolls, uh, the remains of the big roach up into like a ball and then it will go down and put it on the floor. I've actually watched it and I thought that was amazing. So that's how I keep my slings. Don't really use these for P Metallica slings. There's nothing wrong with it, you can do, but I like cross ventilation, so you don't have to put so much moisture in all the time, so it just maintains in there. Or I would probably use little um, juice bottles like this. These are perfect, I use these for all my ball reels, and then go on to uh, the bigger plastic tubs. As I said, smaller ones than this, and then I'll go to this size for juvies, and then from there, I went straight onto this size glass. And then from here, I'll go to the bigger glass enclosure. So that's the step up of what I would do. So there's one in between, let me just see if I've got it. So this is what I would use in my collection, in my room for P Metallicas. Um, I wouldn't use this, they would come in this. If I had one that was very, very frail, uh, maybe I'll put it in this, but I wouldn't use this, but you can do. So put that aside. I would go straight into here with uh, one to two centimeter. And as long as you've put cork bark and enough substrate, I've put no gravel in this, what I did for mine. So just go straight to cocoa fiber, peat moss, maybe a bit of vermiculite as well. And just mix that through, just put it shallow. And I've got air holes all around the bottom. And then what you'll find is the tractors will actually move the substrate around and then just coca fiber all the way up. I like to put little bits of moss in because that holds humidity. And then I've hot glued in ink pots and I find the tractor traverses round, sits out on there and I get used to the spot it's in when it's hungry. So then I can come in and just quickly rotate the lid off, done. And I've put air holes at the top. So I like using these and they're clear all the way around. The ones you just saw me keep them in were this size as slings. And I've done the same again with air holes at the side, all the way around in four positions and then all at the top as well. And then I'll just take that off, but it's just this movement can startle them, but I got them used to it and then they just didn't freak out too much. So either one of these are good. I, I prefer these to be fair. And then from this, so I'd have like say, one to two centimeters in either of these and I'd keep them in there till they're about I'd say four centimetres, maybe a little bit more, and I'll move them straight over into here. And I'll leave them in here for however long they take till they get a good um, two inches plus, probably three inches, maybe a bit more, and then I'll move her over to the glass phase. Because uh, this one's probably four and a half inches. Uh, and then I'll leave it in there and then move it over again to the bigger glass enclosure if I need to. But all my P Metallicas stay in here at the final stage. Um, so that's it. So that's what I use. So I hope that helped you out there, Kieran. Thank you very much for the comment. I hope all the rest of you find that interesting and well to see what I keep with my P Metallicas. And that's what works well for me. So if it doesn't work well for you, do your own thing because your own room will have its own humidity in it. Uh, that side of my room behind you has 50 to 60% humidity and over here has slightly more. So I know where to put them for my humidity, but obviously you do it within the enclosure as well. But if you go off the room, it will affect the enclosure. So you need to be aware of what you've got in your room, what temperature it is and where these are situated. But that's it. So I hope that worked. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.